This video today is about linking some of the concepts to do with nowellism together. So it's a little bit more complicated and I might have to do it in several sections. But I'm going to start by using the uh, nowell insignia that has been presented by Thurn Myers um, as, an, as known worldwide as the caduceus. Okay, so we're going to use that as our template today and explore the concepts of duality, um, moving into unconcern, um, which will also include um, things like the path of heart and control folly. So I'm going to just draw what we see as the caduceus, which is this supposed rod of perception. I mean, some people, the, the, this also includes like the eagle because this has the eagle um, at the top here. Right, so we talk, we talk about the, like the eagle spreading its wings. And often in a uh, you know, depiction, we see the heads of the snakes in the eagle's talons. Okay, so I'm just going to show one kind of perspective on this um, symbol. And let's see if we can start unpicking it to see how we can make sense of it for doing things practically in everyday life in, in sorceric terms obviously okay so we have the two snakes we have the the rod or the path of freedom you know up and past the eagle okay so the eagles at the top emanations obviously but you know we talk about the eagle and the emanations that they're all part to do with the geometry the grids this whole this whole structure of this whole game and the two, the two snakes, uh, light and dark, masculine and feminine, um, you know, good, bad, you know, all, all those kind of things are sort of woven in, in with this. And, um, and you can see that obviously he's got the heads of the two snakes in his talons. So from my um, perception, that is about crushing duality. Understanding that it is a dual plane, it is a creative playground down here, but how do we actually... Um, uh, move out of duality and into freedom so that then we can dart past the eagle. Okay, so how I see it is like a, um, a spectrum. Okay, these are the, these two snakes are obviously, you know, opposite sides or shall we say equal and opposites of some kind of neutral point. Um, in, in expression. So how I explain this, and I'll just get my cloth, wipe the board, right? So that's the, that's the caduceus the eagle, like that. How I explain this is that we all, we just put it onto like a, a little seesaw or a spectrum, okay? Then we have, um, we have sort of all the good emotions, shall we say, all the good feelings and all the all the experiences, etc., etc., on one side, and all the perceived shadow stuff on on the other. And what we are attempting to do is is get it into a place of like neutrality, zero point, if you like, zero point, or un, you know, in our terms, really, would this would be unconcern. But it's got to be inclusive because you can't deny any of it because this is a duality plane, okay? So how I go about this is, well, if you are in, um, we'll, say, we'll say here, and we'll say, let's call this pain, the feeling of pain, okay? Like homeopathy or any other um, balancing to zero point, walking between the worlds, getting back to neutrality, you have to look at the equal and opposite of what you're experiencing okay so for pain so say so for example that would be exactly there it would balance it up you see to, to zero and you would say that this is joy okay so people go but ah oh, if I'm in pain how on earth it would be enjoyed well this is all about gaining awareness remember this whole this whole thing this whole game if you like is all about gaining awareness so there is nothing wrong with pain and there is nothing wrong with joy. Okay, it's just the fact that people don't feel that they have the freedom to switch from one to the other or even include both in their perception. 
And the way you can do this is through unconcern. But you can only do unconcern if you actually are inclusive of both. Okay, so so if you are having an experience of pain, um, it's the fact that you acknowledge pain. But if you want to actually incorporate it into the whole, you would look to see if there was somewhere in your experience, in your timeline, your, your lifetime, if you like, that um, at some point you would have experienced a moment of joy. And if you can find that, find that moment of joy, okay, then pain, if you like, hasn't won. It hasn't got any more any more value or intrinsic value than what joy has okay so it basically it goes ah oh, I had I've had an experience of pain uh, and oh I've had an experience of joy um, they both happened and so therefore you actually come back to being a, shall we say the witness of the fact of having have having had both okay so it, like fear for example fear is interesting because you would put fear probably probably on the extreme end so fear and on the equal and opposite would be well most people would put love here okay um, I'm not really into the the word love because I think it's quite a subjective and uh, it's so many connotations to the word love okay so we're just going to put well-being instead okay so when in fear Okay, you would look in your in your thing. You understand that that you are having an experience of fear. Okay, to equal and opposite and bring that one into neutral, you would look along somewhere where you would find where you'd had an experience of well-being, and you would take yourself into that state. So then you could go in the moment. You can go, aha. Uh -huh, okay, I know fear and I know well-being. Now that kind of awareness of having both. Okay and being inclusive of both, that they are equal and opposite, but that they're on the same game level, if you like, of, of gaining awareness, then that can bring you into a neutral state. Um, people go, well, they can't sort of turn off their minds or, or whatever. This is, this is a way of, shall we say, reasoning out the concept of uh, duality and trying to bring it into the point where you are free of that duality. Um, okay, so you're you're basically doing that. So uh, let's well, I think what else we can think. Okay, anger. Because as people go, oh, I can't be angry. Uh, well, anger. You know, anger here. Okay. Well, maybe on the equal and opposite, you would see that as say uh, laughter. Okay. So again find yourself being angry you see the you perceive the equal and opposite of being laughter I mean it could be joy for you let's not get you know this is not this is just this is just a thing of like okay what is the equal and opposite of okay the equal and opposite of anger for me would be laughter so I think of a time then I you know when I finished wanting to feel this which is okay to feel this okay I, I have experienced anger that's that's cool Okay, um, I go into, uh, when did I last laugh? When did I last have a really good belly laugh? And if I take myself into that, okay, then I go, oh, okay, we're not caught here. This is about the, the, the freedom of choice, okay? That, you know, you can, be, you can be angry and that's completely valid. You can be in pain, completely valid. In fear, completely valid. But you, if you want to do something about it, then you would look to the equal and opposite, if you like, in yourself, within, okay, and um, and look to those particular uh, aspects of yourself as well. So you now you know you've got instead of just having one aspect or two aspects, you actually have the whole lot. So when you you might come up with something um, new, okay, you might come up with something new. So you might come up with a, a situation of say grief. Okay, you know, um, you know, it's it, it's a, a process and it's an ex, it's a, an expression all of itself. Okay, but this is actually how you you know 
you'd have to process this as grief so that you would know grief in its entirety. It's when you do that, when you've actually finished doing that, then actually you'd be able to um, look for the equal and opposite. And, look, you know, most people go, oh, I had lovely memories. We had a nice time. When it gets to a certain process where it's not quite so raw, okay, and they go through, uh, you know, processes of anger and all these other different things, you can still help this big thing by breaking it down and seeing what the equal and opposite is and seeing if you can um, try and maintain some kind of equilibrium. Okay, so what do we do with this equilibrium of unconcern? Okay, well, once you actually know that you're actually gaining awareness, I also use the analogy of the whole fact that unconcern is the car park, the car park with your, your little cars, okay, with your little dotted lines, right to the big supermarket supermarket and this is a big supermarket of life or the big supermarket of experiences of, of all the awareness now some people go in and um, they know how to be um, a tin of beans or a tin of peas on the shelf in the in the canned vegetable section let's say and um, and really, they don't. They even look at their next door neighbour and go, "Oh, uh, that's a different, even a different brand of peas, you know." But that that's not me. Well, that's cool. Once you actually know where you are, but you just imagine just staying a can of peas in the supermarket for for a turn. Well, that's not really what we're about, huh? We're about gaining awareness. But most people get stuck being in that particular aisle. They don't ever look to being a carrot from the uh, vegetable section or a loaf of bread from the bakery or anything else but this would be totality of self being able to be all of it okay on on many different uh, you know it, many different levels all, all the all the experience you could possibly think you it's about that actually being available to this this person in this car here in this vehicle okay so this is our vessel this is our physical vehicle and people get stuck in one or more of the aisles they don't even look necessarily in what's in the next aisle okay but we do our one aisle at a time we, we explore and we expand and as we expand this this driver in here knows what peas are and knows what beans are and it knows what bread is and it knows what soup is and it knows what uh, dried pasta tastes like and it knows all, all the other things it even knows what the mouldy brussels sprouts uh, you know uh, taste like in in uh in the vegetable aisle so all the all the experiences can be an analogized to something in the supermarket for instance and what we're trying to do is gain all this knowledge this awareness of right back into this vehicle but to be able to go around all the supermarkets and experience all these things really you, you need to be relatively neutral about what you're doing okay so going back to the to the to the spectrum, once you've actually acknowledged the fact that you have been something, you know, and you can equal it out and you can actually get to a place of inclusiveness. I can be or it could be um, either, but I'm choosing to um, in go. Mm -hmm. I'm inclusive of both, but I'm unconcerned. And basically you can start not getting attached to certain things this is an analogy of having you know grabbing a trolley and being attached to the trolley the, the cords of having to be something okay well i have to be i have to be this or i have to be that you know dropping those cords to being a tin of peas okay is really valuable because then it obviously brings something else new in it's like, um, you know, it gives you the opportunity to go maybe round the aisle if you've never been round, um, round the back and, and seen what all the packet foods are like. Right? So every time you create an attachment to something, you're actually limiting, limiting what awareness that you, can, you can gain. So the less attachments, the, the more you're free to, to, to roam the whole, the whole place. Okay? And... Um, 
going into the world can be seen like this, a stalking the world can be going to seen like this as well. Uh, you go to your friends and you go to work and you go to school or some institution, you, you know, you have to deal with authorities, you know, you have to, or, or whatever, and you can use the same thing. What you do is you dash in, knowing that you're holding a trolley, you go and deal with whatever uh, little section that you have to go and deal with. And when, you, when you've done with that, okay, and you've, you, you've interacted and you've been whatever you need to be in that situation, okay, then you can take yourself out to being in the car park, but you sort of metaphorically put your trolley back, okay, put your trolley back, get your pound back and and come back into the car park and, and be in your vessel again, okay? That, so that, if you manage to do that, that's actually what controlled folly is, okay? It's the ability to stay unconcerned, but go and actually delve in, delve into this whole range of um, experiences, gain the awareness from the experience, right? but don't hold attachment to it. Go, ha ha, I have had that experience. Now I place my trolley back and I can come back into being in my being. Right? Okay, so what happens when we don't do the control fully? Obviously, attachments, uh, very little freedom of choice, um, and in the gap of contradiction of it should be or it shouldn't be, okay, that's where the mind builds. Okay, that's where the mind builds in order to cope with the, the supposed discrepancy between something and something else. Um, this is where morality comes in the perception of morality something is good something isn't so good um well it just is it's all there in the supermarket as one big thing um nobody divided the supermarket up and went oh well you mustn't go into this particular aisle right because because we need awareness of all of it because if you're going to experience the extremes of this, that you'll only know the supermarket if you know this bit here on this end aisle, and if you've gone all the way and you've experienced this bit on this end aisle, okay? So you can't really, um, shall we say, shut out or avoid these, all these experiences. Well, well, you can, but that means to say that you won't reach totality of self and you won't reach freedom because you're double has the awareness of, of all of this if you like or the awareness that it is connected to all of this and if you don't bring all this awareness in through all your levels then the the you know the double if it has all of this and you're cutting off well i'm not going to do this part of it um well obviously it's not going to come fully into your vessel is it so it keeps it separate so you won't have full awareness of the whole you'll just have well, this is my aisle, and I, 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 I'll just do a few more things. It's like cherry picking, cherry picking life, um, and the mind tries to rationalise this. Goes, well, that's actually not good, is it? Or this isn't, uh, this isn't what I do. Um, you know, I, I can't even consider. Um, I don't know. For example, let's let's put it. Let's let's see. Um, killing a person or killing an animal. Okay, if you've never even contemplated that to go, well, actually in certain circumstances I actually could um, and actually sort of sat with that and gone, well, yeah, it's got to be okay, you see. You've got to get it to a point where it's okay. Not that it's okay in everyday life to go doing that, but the fact is that you had the, you would have, you would acknowledge the fact that you could and you would in a particular set of circumstances. And if you do that, then basically you are allowing yourself the whole fact of like another, another add-on of, of awareness. This is not, um, it's, it's like being a god self or, or, a, or an angel or, or whatever else that somebody else would like to be. Um, but, the, but you know, people see that as a, a good thing. They, they see it's half, but it's only half the spectrum. The love and light stuff's only half the spectrum. You haven't looked at the other half of the spectrum. Um, because you can't get into unconcern about what else is going around you. You will just see the discrepancies everywhere that you go. 
you, you, you'll just see, oh, they are, you know, they are mean people, they are evil authorities, they are whatever, when really they're just playing in the supermarket. Uh, and, and to understand how to play in the supermarket, you've got to know the supermarket. So when things come up and you really feel you can't accept them, you know, you have to place yourself in a position of what actually would get me to be in that position myself. Now, for example, we'll just go into daily politics and, um, you know, governments making uh, decisions that we don't necessarily agree with. And you go, well, they can't do that because... Um, they're, they're, this is this is immoral, and uh, it really shouldn't be allowed to happen here. Well, well, no, everything's allowed to happen here. It's just the fact of how are you going to counteract that? How are you going to deal with it? How are you going to cope with it? All right? How are you going to be unconsent and gain your freedom through that? And I agree to a certain extent that if you have one extreme then you could take on the other extreme and, and shall we say, cancel them out. But you're then only cancelling them out for maybe your perception. I suppose as a warrior, I would go in and see exactly the, the rules that they weren't playing by and see if I could get myself into the perception of where I don't have to play by the rules that I am um, currently perceiving myself to having been stuck in. So, um, and I don't really become attached to it. To me, it's all folly, you see. If, if I am all that, if I acknowledge that I am all that, and if I acknowledge that that person is all that, then I can play by with whichever rules that I like. Um, but depending, I can play the, the conformist if I so choose. And I can play the non-conformist if I so choose. Yes, and I can switch between them because I, or I don't have an attachment to being one or the other. And that gives me my, my well-being, all right? My well-being, my freedom to be. Um, as I can, so we say, shapeshift in, in and out of whatever um, awareness that I would like to be in. So that obviously can be sprung-boarded into, you know, uh, shapeshifting and dreaming as other things. Um, other realms, etc., etc. You know, I just see it all as a block of bolt on an analogy to this particular supermarket. I've been to this level, right? Okay, I'm not attached to that level. What's the next intent for for gaining new awareness, so that I can gain more awareness and bring be, become more totality of myself? <laughs>